Hey Optimancers, Chris here. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, some new content that's on D&D Beyond. The Vecna Dossier. The Arklich Vecna is one of the most iconic villains of Dungeons and Dragons lore. And now you can bear witness to his necromantic magic with the Vecna Dossier. Available at no cost with your D&D Beyond account, this thrilling supplement details the legacy and statistics of the Undying King himself. So I want to take a little bit closer look at this document. So obviously, spoilers! Alright, so for those who aren't aware, Vecna is a god in D&D. And the idea of Vecna is that he was betrayed by his lieutenant Cass. And Cass used a artifact called the Sword of Cass that you can find in your Dungeon Master's Guide to defeat Vecna. And in doing so, he removed his eye and his hand, which are also items in the Dungeon Master's Guide. These are all artifacts. And originally, it was only the eye and hand survived, but then later on, they decided no Vecna survived, but just without the eye and hand, and he becomes a god. But the idea was, is that Vecna was so powerful that only the artifact Sword of Cass and the Hands of Cass was able to mostly defeat him, except for his eye and hand. And I should mention here that what we see in the dossier is Vecna before the betrayal. So this is the Vecna pre-god, still has the hand and the eye. But the idea is, is that Vecna can travel through time, could appear anywhere. So it doesn't matter that this is before Cass betrayed him. The Yura character still might encounter him. Now, I don't want to spoil the whole adventure. Uh, but basically, you go through this little tower where there's not a lot of heavy challenges. It's intended for 20th level characters, and it suggests between 3 and 4 20th level characters. And in the end, you get to fight Vecna, the Arklich. And they say if you want to make Vecna a little more challenging for your players, what you could do is you could give them the Book of Vile Darkness, or you could give them some layer actions that take place on Initiative Account 20. Uh, but let's take a look at Vecna. So Vecna is challenge rating 26. Now for 3 to 4 20th level characters, a 26 challenge rating in theory should be somewhat challenging. I am here to tell you that Vecna is not challenging at all and you don't even need to be optimized. Uh, so first let's take a look. Armor class 18, hit points 272, dexterity plus 3, uh, we see damage resistances to cold, lightning, and necrotic, and damage immunities to poison, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non-magical attacks. He has a special feature called Undying. If Vecna is slain, his soul refuses to accept his fate and lives on as a disembodied spirit that fashions a new body for itself after 1d100 years. Vecna's soul can fashion a new body even if its old body was burned, ash, blah, blah, blah. When the new body is complete, Vecna regains all hit points and becomes active again. Vecna's new body appears anywhere within 100 miles of where Vecna was slain. So in other words, if you slay Vecna, you don't really have to worry about him for the rest of the campaign unless the campaign is taking place over decades and decades. So going over something else that's really important here, Vecna has no legendary actions. No legendary actions at all. That means that Vecna cannot take any actions until his initiative comes up. And as I mentioned, initiative will be plus three. He has no additional bonuses to initiative. And once his initiative comes up, then he's got some cool stuff he can do. He has a number of good spells. He has a Rotten Fate ability that does a reasonable amount of damage. He has a magic dagger called Afterthought that does, man, not great damage, but he has a multi-attack where he uses Flight of the Damned, Rotten Fate, or Spellcasting, and then makes two attacks with Afterthought, so Afterthought is an Afterthought. Flight of the Damned creates a 120-foot cone that does, like, 8d8 damage. It's like a cone of cold, but if you fail the save, you are Frightened of Vecna for a minute, and on a successful save, you take half as much damage and you aren't frightened. A couple other things. He has a bonus action teleport. And it's basically like a misty step. Except that any creature of his choice within 15 feet of his destination take a little bit of psychic damage. We're talking like 10 points on average. But if at least one creature takes this damage, Vecna regains 80 hit points. 
So that's a fair amount of healing. So basically on his turn, he would want to teleport next to somebody he can damage and regain those AD hit points. And he has a special feature where he can take up to three reaction per round, but only one per turn. His first action is a dread counterspell that works like the counterspell spell, but because it's not a spell, it cannot be counterspelled. So you don't have counterspell wars. In addition, if he successfully counterspells you, you take like 10 points of damage. And then he has a fell rebuke. If he's hit by an attack, he utters a fell word dealing about 10 points of damage to the attacker. And then he can teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space he can see. So I want to demonstrate just how weak this is. Let's go ahead and say that we are going to play in this 20th level one shot. And let's say that we have two players and neither of them are optimizers. And the DM says, you can't have a single magic item. Your 20th level character, no magic items. So the two players get together, decide, uh, let's just make a couple human fighters. Uh, so we're just going to make some human fighters. So race, uh, human, not variant human, just a regular old human, plus one to all stats. And then class, fighter 20. Ability scores, uh, so I guess we'll do uh, standard array. And they think, you know, longbows are pretty cool. Let's use some longbows. So we'll do maximum dexterity. And then beyond that, we're fighters. I guess we should have good strength. And, uh, oh, I like to have good charisma. So let's do that. And intelligence and wisdom. And I guess we could just dump our constitution scores. So this is a bad set of stats, but it'll do. So we're going to use a longbow. So we will go ahead and take the archery combat style for martial archetype. Uh, let's, we're going to be shooting longbows, and this says archer, so archer must be really good. Arcane archer lore, uh, we'll do the arcana, and press to digitation. Arcane shot options, well, banishing arrow sounds cool, beguiling arrow sounds cool, bursting arrow sounds cool. Look at that, bursting arrow just does more damage, I guess that's all we're ever going to use. But we'll grab enfeebling arrow, grasping arrow sounds lame, let's take piercing arrow instead. And we'll take Seeking Arrow. Ability score improvement. Well, we are going to use a longbow, so we will take Sharpshooter. After that, well, we probably want to increase our dexterity. So we'll go ahead and increase our dexterity. And we'll do that till we get dexterity 20. Then we have four more ability score improvements. Well, let's see. Uh, I guess Herd Lucky is good. Let's grab Lucky. Going first in combat, I guess, is good. So we'll grab Alert. And I don't know. Let's increase our intelligence and our charisma. And let's increase our strength and our wisdom. Okay, so I've taken some good choices. I mean, increasing dexterity is good for an archer. Taking sharpshooter is good for an archer. And I've taken some crappy choices. And the DM has said, all you get is standard first level character equipment. Okay, well, we'll take leather armor, longbow, and 20 arrows. And that'll do it. So we have two characters, the Vecna Challengers, 104 hit points each, initiative plus 10, plus 13 to hit for a d8 plus 5 with their longbows. So what would happen if we have these two characters and they take on Vecna? Well, first off, we don't know for sure what would happen with the initiative. But let's go ahead and say everyone rolls a 10. All right, so everyone rolled a 10 on initiative, so Vecna is going to go on 13, and our two characters are going to go on 20. Now, because Lair Action says specifically that if a character ties the 20 on initiative, the character goes first, our characters will go before any layer actions occur. Now I want some tips on how I should run Vecna, so let's see what D&D Beyond tells me. Now strength lies isn't being an amazing magic user, so although it might be tempting to kind of throw him at your players, I would actually hazard to say to keep him as far away as you can and aim for the squishy people first. Um, now, he does have some really cool reactions in his kit to deal with if players run up to him. 
He's got that uh, vile teleport where if he gets, an, or sorry, uh, fell rebuke where he can basically teleport away with a vile teleport if he does get struck. I think that informs you on everything you need to do. I definitely say you can use afterthought to hit, but I would recommend getting out of the fray as quickly as possible and unleashing like a barrage of spells and AOE damage on the players instead because that's going to hurt them a lot more. <laughs> that makes a ton of sense. And of course, uh, he has five a day legendary resistances, so he can shrug mm -hmm. off a lot of what they're going to try on him. Okay, so this is how the DM is instructed to run this character. So don't throw him into melee. And then uh, on his turn, we're going to cast some wicked spells. Uh, his legendary resistances and his fell rebuke, these are going to help him survive. Let's see how that's going to play out. So, Initiative 20 comes up, and Vecna Challenger number one is going to take their action. So, what are they going to do? Well, I guess they get their longbow, so they might as well fire it at Vecna. They are a 20th level fighter. They're going to fire four times. They have the sharpshooter thing. So, they might as well use the option to take minus five to hit for plus 10 damage. So, now they're doing a D8 plus 15 per hit. That will give them an average damage of 19.5 on a hit. With the minus 5 to hit, they now have a plus 8 to hit. And what was Vecna's armor class again? Right, 18. That means they have a 55% chance to hit. So here's how you do it. You just go 0.55 times 19.5. That's 10.725. Then there is also the chance that we could crit. So you take the 0 0.05, which is the 5% chance to crit, times the average critical added damage, which would be the average roll of a D8 of 4.5, and that gives us 0 0.225. So just to make the math easy, this is approximately 11 points of damage per arrow. So they're going to fire four arrows. That's 44 damage. Uh, and then they're a fighter, so they might as well action surge. I mean, they have multiple action surges at this level. So they'll action surge and do another 44 damage. So now we're talking 88 damage. Right, and we had a couple of these arcane arrow things. So these bursting arrows, immediately after the arrow hits a creature, the target and all creature, creatures within 10 feet of it take 46 force damage each. That's 14 extra points of damage on two arrows. All right, and we have lucky. We might as well use them all. So we have three luck points per long rest whenever you make an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. So on three of our misses, then we'll want to use a luck point to re-roll. That's essentially going to give us three additional attempts to hit. So we were at 88 points. We had 28 more from bursting arrows. And then three more chances to hit is another 33 damage. So we have done 149 points of damage. Now we move on to Vecna Challenger number two. And what are they going to do? They're going to do the exact same thing. So 149 is now times two. Vecna has now taken 298 points of damage. All right, now it's Vecna's turn. Wait, Vecna's dead. And all this additional stuff. Legendary resistances, didn't use any of them. All these damage immunities, damage resistances didn't come into play. The saving throws didn't come into play. Never used Flight of the Damned, Rotten Fate, never used any of their spells. And I should mention that in the adventure that they include, the final battle takes place in an enclosed room, and Vecna is by himself. There's nowhere for him to go. So although he could potentially do a Fell Rebuke with one of those hits on each of those turns, all it's going to do is 10 points of damage to the character. They have plenty of hit points to take 10 points of damage, and he can teleport, but the idea is, I think they suggest that he should be teleporting out of melee, but they don't need to use melee. They're just shooting him, and he dies. His dread counterspell is useless, because they don't cast any spells. And again, these are not super optimized characters. In fact, they're hardly optimized. Just, just the basic, basic stuff for optimization. And we have two human 20th level fighters, and Vecna is dead before he gets a turn. And that's a problem. It's okay if the 20th level characters occasionally just walk over a combat. But this is kind of built in. That's two characters. That is less than this module recommends, 
and these are not well-made characters, and they had zero magic items. Now, I should say that he does have immunity to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. So, the magic arrow feature from Arcane Archer was actually necessary to defeat him if the characters had zero magic weapons at level 20. But, I mean, let's face it, if you're playing a 20th level one-shot, your DM's probably going to give you a magic weapon. So, why? What is the problem with this monster? Well, first off, we have to address the problem with challenge ratings in general. Challenge ratings are not a great tool to determine how challenging something is going to be to the characters. And when you get to higher levels, it gets worse. But also, let's just compare Vecna to other challenge rating 26 creatures. I couldn't find a single challenge rating 26 creature without legendary actions except for Vecna. Vecna is the only one. So any other creature, at least after the first fighter went, would get a legendary action. But Vecna gets nothing. Here's the Crystal Great Worm. This came out fairly recently. Fizzbin's Treasury of Dragons. 26 challenge rating. 507 hit points with the armor class 21. And then there is a special feature called Gem Awakening. Recharges after a short or long rest. If the Great Worm would be reduced to zero hit points, its current hit point total instead resets to 400 hit points. Recharges breath weapons, regains any expended uses of legendary resistance. Additionally, it can now use its mass telekinesis action during the next hour. So basically, you do 507 hit points and then another 400 hit points. So this creature effectively has over 900 hit points with an armor class of 21. Here is the Demogorgon, challenge rating 26. I would say the Demogorgon is underpowered for a 26 challenge rating creature. But it still has 464 hit points and 22 armor class, and it has legendary actions which include the ability to cast a spell, in its case, up to an 8th level spell. And I have seen Demogorgon go down to a much lower level party, just with no problem at all. So how do we fix this? How do we fix Vecna? If I wanted to run this 20th level one shot, I gotta tell you, it would have to change because it's okay for the party to walk over a challenging encounter. But if it's like a one shot and then there's one big encounter and it's really the only exciting encounter in the entire one shot, for them to win the combat before the enemy creature does anything is super anticlimactic. So what could you do? Well, the first thing is 18 is an extremely low armor class for this guy. And he doesn't even have the shield spell. And he's supposed to be this Arc Lich, and he hasn't even learned the shield spell. I'd be looking at maybe armor class 20 with the shield spell, or maybe armor class 22 or 23 without. And then hit points, 272. It's too low. He should probably have 400 hit points or more. But then something occurred to me. What about the mythology of Vecna? Vecna was supposed to be this, like, undefeatable Arc Lich, but only Cass with the Sword of Cass was able to defeat him. So what if we kept the armor class at 18 and we kept the hit points at 272, but we changed our damage immunities to include bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from attacks that are not attacks from artifacts. And then you include an artifact earlier in the adventure. Maybe the characters find the Sword of Cass or they find another artifact weapon and they can use that weapon to defeat Vecna. Then, in combat, you either have to try to work through five legendary resistances with great saving throws, or the character that has this artifact weapon, the other characters are buffing him, helping him, maybe attempting to restrain Vecna or knock him prone or something to help that one guy get the damage. And that would actually kind of fit the mythology, Vecna defeated by an artifact. I wanted to point this out because I looked at Vecna and it was so disappointing. And when I looked at the adventure, I thought maybe they gave him a ton of minions. But you know what? If, even if they had given him a ton of minions, which they didn't, but had they, these two characters still could have just shot Vecna. And Vecna dies before Vecna takes a turn. And so then it's a fight against minions. So I just wanted to point it out that as a DM, if you are going to do a 20th level one shot, this could still be an interesting encounter, but I think you need to do something to make sure Vecna isn't just going to die before he does anything. You want him to actually do some things to get the characters a little bit scared of him 
before they can finally defeat him. And those are just my thoughts on the matter. So, otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.